So, we're not going to rewrite the learning target because it's basically written right here. But our goal here is we're going to use proportions to solve geometric problems. So now we're going to take what we learned about proportions and how those two ratios are equivalent to each other, and we're going to apply them to geometric problems. Now, before we do that, we have to understand that a proportion is an equation. That means that two ratios have to be equivalent to each other. So A over B is equivalent to C over D. Since that equation is true, there are certain other properties that are also true that we can apply. And for us guys, it's a lot of just recognizing patterns. So if A over B is congruent to C over D, then I can say that A over C is congruent to B over D. Look at the change that happened there. Look at the change that would happen. What did I do to get that new equivalent ratio? I kind of switched some things. What did I switch? I took the numerators and I made them one fraction. I took the denominators and I made them a different fraction or a different ratio. So when I, when I do that, those are equivalent to each other. Okay? But guess what, Mr. Russell? That's not what we're trying to get at. Mr. Russell kind of jumped the gun. Slow down, Mr. Russell. I'm looking at letter C when I should be looking at A. Oh, boy. Cross product. What's the cross, cross product going to be? That's why we write everything in pencil. What's the cross product mean? I can multiply one numerator by the denominator of the other fraction. What's A times D? Well, A times D is going to be equal to B times C. So if A over B is equal to C over D, then A times D would have to be equal to B times C. All right? That's the cross product property. It's always true. Reciprocal property. What does the reciprocal mean? I flip, right? So what's the reciprocal of A over B? B over A. Reciprocal of C over D? D over C. So as long as I take the reciprocal of both ratios, the proportion is still true. So if A over B is equal to C over D, then B over A is equal to D over C. So if A over B is equal to C over D, here we go. A over C are the two numerators, right? So then I would have to go in the same order if I had B and D and that would be equal to B over D. Okay. The quick way to check that is if I take in the cross product of my new proportion. If I do that, I still get B times D, and I still get C times B. So since the cross products are the same, then these two, rate, these two proportions are also true. Look at the last one. This is a tricky one. What am I doing to get A plus B over B? I'm adding the first ratio together, A plus B, and then I divide it by the same denominator, B. So here, I'd have what? C plus D all over D. Okay? For that last one, and number three, it's all pattern recognition. Can I follow the pattern that's happening here? So go ahead and complete the statements for one through four. See if you can fill in the blanks for these ratios using the four properties above. X over Y. It's using that pattern from uh, letter C. Uh, what about number two? Number two? Hmm. Erica, what'd you get? Uh, X over Y 12 over 26. 12 over 26. Same pattern, right? Just with numbers. Good. I could always simplify 12 over 26, right? They both have a common factor of 2, so that would be 6 over 13. Um, what would I hear, have here for number 3? Number 3, yeah. Rita? Um, 7 plus y. Uh, 7 plus y or y plus 7, same thing, right? All over y, very good. The number stays the same. Last one's tricky. How would I get 11? Yeah, um, if I add 9 and 2, isn't 9 plus 2 equal to 11? So I did 9 plus 2 over 2, so here I would have x plus y over what? y. Hmm? Okay.
about that? Cool. Alright, let's turn to the next page here. Now they give me the conditional statements. We want to determine if they're true or false. So rather than filling the blanks, they gave me the blanks. Now I seem to see if they were right or they were wrong. So go ahead and take a minute here and look at 5 through 9 and see if you can label it as true or false. You can look back at your proportions if you need to in your notes. See if they satisfy. Let's see how we did here. Number 1, x over y is equal to 8 over 3. What did they do differently in the second set? Flip them, right? So was that one of my properties? Yeah, so this is true. This is using that reciprocal property. Number six, x over y is equal to 8 over 3. Now it's 3 over x is equal to y over 8. What do you think, Buddha? False. False? Well, if it were true, if I took the cross product, wouldn't they be the same? What's 3 times x? 3x. This would be 8y. So this, when I do the cross product, should also be 3x and 8y. But what do I get? 24 equals xy. Are those the same? No. no. So this would be false. What about number 7? False. Good. Same thing applies, right? I get 3x, 8y, and I get 24 and xy. This is false. Ooh, number eight, number eight. Yeah? Well, it looks like the, the numerator denominator matched with my numerators. And here I have eight over three, which matches eight over three here. So yeah, this would be true. This one's tricky. How many people, raise your hand if you think it's false. Ooh, how many people think it's true? All right. So, right now, if I added x and y and put it over y, wait, that's not what I get here. And if I add 8 over 3, that's 24. I should get 24 over 3. Why doesn't that work? But there might be something I could do to change this. What is this guy equal to? If I wanted to change it and use this, right? This is a true statement, right? So couldn't I change x over y, 8 over 3? to x over 8 over y over 3. Aren't those equivalent? We already said they're both true. So if that really is this, then can I use that sum property? What's x plus 8? x plus 8 over 8. y plus 3 over y equals 3. Is this true? Yeah, right? We already said this was true. We already went from here to here. And now we're trying to go from here to here. Does that match my sum property? Yes. So by law of syllogism, they're both true. Because remember that syllogism property back in chapter 2? If, if I know A is true to B and B is true to C, then I can say that A is true to C. I can follow that same pattern all the way through. All right? So number... 9 is true. Uh, 10, 11, 12, not very difficult types of problems, but all we're going to do is solve the proportion. To solve, we're going to use that cross product property. Cross product. So cross product means x times 24 is 24x, 9 times 6 is 45, and when I divide 45 by 24, I end up with either a decimal or a fraction. What are my two answers? Thank you. 9 times 6 is not 45, it's 54. Got my, got my numbers mixed up. Oh, you admit there. Yeah. 54 divided by 24? 2.25? I think so. Break out your calculator. 54 divided by 24? 2.25. Or as a fraction, that'd be what? 
use my handy dandy calculator here. 54 divided by 24. Math, enter, enter. 9 fourths. Either answer would be acceptable. In this case, either answer would be acceptable. All right? Um, however, now in 11, rather than giving me linear term, like a single variable term, they give me a binomial. They give me a number plus a coefficient. Or a, or a variable plus a number. So when I multiply here, I need to be very careful about my cross product. Four is being multiplied to this difference. So I have to make sure that I take four and I multiply it to x minus three, the entire thing. Since I have a three here and I'm taking the product of this y plus three, I'm going to have a three and I'm going to multiply it by the sum of y plus three. The biggest mistake students make with these types of problems is they only distribute three and the four to the variable rather to everything in the parentheses. I have to distribute the three into the y and into that three. So that gives me three y plus nine. Here when I distribute, I end up with 4y minus 12. And that's the correct terms that I want to be able to subtract from. So when I take away 3y's from 4y's, I end up with 1y. And when I add 12 to 9, I end up with, when I add 12 to 9, oh, oh thank you. y equals 21, 21. All right. All right, let's stop. Uh, go ahead and try your 12. Cross multiply, a cross product, but distribute, 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 distribute. multiply into the variable, right? So I also had to multiply 7 by 3, so that should be a 21. I should have multiplied 3 by 5 and got 15. Good catch. Typical mistake. When I take away 5 from 6, what do I end up with? 1. When I add 21 to negative 15, what do I end up with? Y equals 6. Y equals 6. All right. Now remember, we're trying to use proportions to solve geometric problems. Here's where our geometry sets in. So. What does this statement tell me? It tells me that the sides MN are proportional to MO and their proportion is their ratio is equal to 3 over 4. So MN over MO 9 over X is is means equal equal to this ratio of 3 to 4. I took the length of MN, 9, and I put it in a ratio over MO, which was X. That's the geometry part. Now it's the cross product property. 9 times 4 is 36 divided by 3M, X is equal to 12. The side lengths of PQR, what's that colon mean? QR. 
proportional. are proportional to the side lengths of STU. And their side lengths have a ratio of 1 to 3. They want me to solve for x. So if 1 to 3 is my ratio, 1 is associated, the top is associated with which triangle? Which goes on top? Which triangle comes first in the ratio? PQR. So triangle PQR is on top. Triangle PQR is right here. The bottom is triangle STU. STU is right here. So what side is my variable on? Which side is my variable on? Which triangle? STU, and what side is that? SU. SU. So I'm going to set one third equal to SU. Sorry. Which side? SU, top or bottom? Bottom. STU, bottom. SU, I want to set that in a ratio with its corresponding side. So SU matches with what side on the other triangle? PR. So what's the length of PR? 5. This is 5. What's the length of SU? X. So 1 third equals 5 over X. Let's rewrite that real quick so it's easier to see. 1 third is equal to 5 over X. I use my cross product property. So X is equal to 15. I have to make sure I set up my triangles in the same proportion that they tell me. If I don't, I mess up my process. Hey, this looks familiar. I think we already did it. Use the proportion and find the missing side. Use the proportion and find the missing side. Go ahead, go. Plug in the values you know, cross product, and find the missing side. If you have questions, let me know. I'll come around and help. See if we can find the the right pairing. A B is six. B C I don't know. A E is twelve. E D is four. Cross multiply. Twenty four equals twelve X. So X equals two. B C is equal to two. This is always the tricky one. AB, that's 12. BC, I don't know, X, is equal to AE, that's 18. ED, I don't know. Huh? How do you know that? Nice. Y is really 15. A little late there, Tyler, but that's all right. Um, all right, so when I cross, can I do this? 18 over 15, they have to have a common factor. What is that? Three. Three. Yes. So, three. Three. If this is three, then it would be six over five. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking out a common factor that they both share. I'm dividing out one, basically. Right? So now, when I cross multiply, 12 times five is... 60, and when I divide 60 by 6, I get x equals 10. Nope. If you can simplify a ratio and go through it, or if you just go ahead and do straight multiplication, that's fine too. Sometimes simplifying a ratio makes it a little easier to do in your head. No. We have two more pages. But I think we're done with this lesson, so yes.